Lego, 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 Star yeah. Wars. And Star Wars is so huge that we decided to divide it up into episodes. So today is episode one. But who are these people? Everybody's got a costume but me. <laughs> Nobody told me I needed a costume. Ed, we can fix that. This is so cute. It's Jar Jar Pinks. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy, so for those listening to the podcast, Ed's got a uh, knit cap that is Jar Jar Binks, he's got his eyes and his big long ears. He's looking good. I guess, is that what the female Gungans looked like? Yeah. <laughs> Were they pink with a mustache? and <laughs> Exactly like this. Exactly. Exactly. In fact, you make a very attractive Gungan. I'm like, everybody was going to wear a costume. I was like, where's mine? How come I don't have one? I don't have anything at home that's Star Wars-y. And Chris said that Jillian would take care of me. <laughs> she did. And she this did. is how she takes care of me. That's my she... least favorite character <laughs> in the whole Star Wars genre it, it ever. Looks good and it's pink. Funny is your least favorite character, Ed, because that's all I hear you talk about. <laughs> Jar Jar Banks and the naked C-3PO. <laughs> he was naked. <laughs> We're going to get into it, but let's introduce our panel. We have, on my far right, your left, Darth Maul. Darth Maul, correct. We have <laughs> Jar Jar Ed. Me so glad to be here. <laughs> <laughs> and we actually have a Jedi Master with us today. We have Jillian. Hello there. Hello. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Jillian works in the store, but I never see you. Actually, I don't know that much about you because she always works on the weekends, and I always work during the week. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Since this is the first time you're here, what attracts you to Lego? What attracts me to Lego is all the different franchises Lego has the opportunity to get to cover, whether it's Ninjago, Star Wars, and just the odd, just different pop cultures references mm -hmm. that Lego gets its hands on and gets to create some amazing sets for it. Like Stranger Things is one of them. I thought the Stranger Things set was amazing. And other than that, I am a content creator. I love making videos. I make some TikToks for the store. Um, and I'm a huge Star Wars fan. That truly, I grew up owning a bunch of Star Wars Legos. Um, Lego. 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 <laughs> And uh, <laughs> to this day, I have a bunch of, actually a bunch of pod racers around my child, Lego pod racers hanging from the ceiling around my childhood bedroom. Nice. <laughs> and Chris, I did meet you at a convention and we were all in Star Wars, with, in our Star Wars gear with the 501st. That was it. And yeah. they, we have a little sister club called the Mandalorian Mercs and we have this little prison cell that you can give a little donation and we can and the mercs can arrest people and then i had gone to the booth yeah. that they had a dragon con one year and then it comes another year and here we are well two years now it's kind of like when qui-gon jinn meets anakin and it was you know not a coincidence there mm -hmm. are no coincidences yeah you know what does qui-gon jinn call it it was Midi chlorians. It, it was the midi chlorians. There's no coincidence because of midi chlorians. Oh, okay. So Jillian has a high midi chlorian. Category. Yeah, I can tell. I can tell oh, right yes. here it's oh, radiating. Yes. And I do too because that's how we met. And yes. Mm -hmm. Right now yes. they're clashing and Ed just is in the middle of it. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's like a midi chlorian vacuum. <laughs> can, <laughs> can Gungans have midi chlorian? No. Not, not one trace of a midi chlorian in a Gungan at all. Nothing. They're, They're anti-midichlorian. They're midichlorian deficient. Mm -hmm. we, were, we were talking about Gungans, though, and this is related to episode one, because mm -hmm. Gungan. Was there a female Gungan in episode one? Or are they uh, asexual? 
So they're, they're all one, you know how some fish, there's no male or female. So I think Gungans could be that way. Maybe, maybe they're like yeah. some frogs and they can change their sex at yeah. will. Yeah. Let's, okay, let's stop <laughs> this and actually get into Star Wars. Uh, I did want to mention she does make her own costumes. In fact, she made the costume she's wearing right now and Ed's beautiful hat. She also made, you want to get him out? Yes. My pride and joy. This beautiful baby right here. And you do sell these? I these do, are... yes. I make them, I get the base, and then I make the horns, I paint the him, I dye his little robe. It's... You know, a little bundle of Darth yeah. joy. Absolutely hideous in a <laughs> loving way. It has a little yeah. backpack on. And yes. anybody listening on our podcast, this is a baby Darth Maul that looks very much like Grogu, but with a Darth Maul face and <laughs> horns. Yeah, and so you bought a yeah. Grogu toy. Yes, and I bought a Mattel doll. And and highly customized it. Yes. Very, very fine paintwork on Thank that. Thank you. Very nicely done. So we'll put that in the, the description and also the links to her mm -hmm. social media, Wait if back. you'd like us to. <laughs> Wave in. Wave. Wave. We've set the stage. We have the Star Wars experts and the super fans. Well, first of all, let's just hit let's go hit the controversy mm -hmm. right from the start. Prequels. You like them, you hate them. I love the prequels. My wife does not. She's a Star Wars fan, but she's not as big of a fan as me. And I think the prequels could have been about anything, and I still would have liked them <laughs> because they're Star Wars, yeah. but the more I go back and watch them, the more I'm like, "Man, that was awesome." And and there's just so many uh, allusions to other Star Wars, you know, episodes mm -hmm. in them uh, and in the original episodes that I love the prequels. Okay, even in when it fact, came out, uh, episode two or three uh, are probably my favorite episodes, even more than the trilogy. Oh wow! Yeah, because of the clones and Jango Fett and the, all the Jedi in the original trilogies, you didn't have all the Jedi. The Jedi yeah. were so cool. How about you, Jar Jar Ed? Well, I am from the generation that grew up. It's so hard to be serious with the Jar Jar. <laughs> I grew up watching Episode Four at the movies, and I was just taken. It was like, wow, this is amazing. This is so cool, and I wanted to know more about the Star Wars. So. Episode 5 comes out, you learn more about this Boba Fett dude, and uh, we didn't know what Mandalorian was until later. It, he was a bounty hunter from the Clone Wars. We're like, what is a Clone Wars? And just trying to find out all this other stuff. So Episodes 1, 2, and 3 really helped to bring that in. And yeah, it was cool. But being old school for my generation, when you look at things being done on Episode 1, you're kind of like, okay, it's Star Wars, it's cool. And I've heard this before. It's kind of like pizza. Even if it's cold, it's still pizza. So it's like Star <laughs> yes. Wars. It, it can be anything, and it's Star Wars. You're going to want to see it or, you know, look at it and watch it. Maybe not as many times as you would certain other episodes, but I just cannot get over certain characters in the film, like Jar Jar. <laughs> Your favorite. Thing, it, it appeared... From a swamp, and I'm like, oh, no, 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 please, no, no, don't make, no, don't keep him on the movie. Kill him off. Let one of those MTTs just run him over. <laughs> no. We, my whole family liked Jar Jar Binks. Uh, I had two older brothers, and we were all Star Wars fans. My dad was a Star Wars fan, my mom, and we had a stuffed Jar Jar Binks doll that talked. And you know how those things can get annoying after you, you listen to them over and over oh, and yeah. over and over yeah. again? Like episode one. I don't remember him getting annoying. I mean, he was, we, we just thought he was funny. I looked at him and I thought to myself, Bugs Bunny coming off of a crack bender. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I'm like, what is this? Why? Who came up with this? With the ears? How did this thing even evolve? And then, and then he takes him to the underground base. Oh my gosh, this thing has a city? <laughs> they make subs? And of course, the uh, Qui-Gon, right? He does a Jedi mind trick on Boss Nass. Of course he does. These things are inferior. And then there's that part where they're in the swamp. I'm, I know I'm jumping ahead in the movie, but there's that part in the swamp where they're like, they need the, the Gungans' help. And she asked Boss Nass, hey, look, I uh, really need your help. And Boss Nass is like, oh, so you sir, don't think you're better than us? I would have added a line in that movie. I would have been like, yes, we do think we're better than you. We just need you to sacrifice your people so we can kill you guys off while we take back our city. 
And he went, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> yeah, let's do this. I mean, I'm like, wow, they are dumb. Okay, <laughs> okay. It just, as long as we say that you're better than us. I don't know. The guy, I don't know how were, those things evolved. They were total bait in that movie. Yeah. yeah. For the, yeah. the cannon fodder. <laughs> <laughs> so you grew up with the prequels as yes. the Star Wars that your generation knew. I was, Can you tell me kind mm -hmm. of your perspective? Did you see the original mm -hmm. first and then the prequels? Did you watch it in order? Well, I was a youngling, you could say, <laughs> when the prequels are coming out. And I distinctly <clears throat> remember I saw the original, and then slowly I see these other films coming into play, and I'm like, who are these characters? And the thing that I fell in love with was the costumes, because I felt they got even more elaborate with all the outfits, all mm -hmm. of Padme's outfits oh goodness, that she yeah. had. It seems like every time she walked out of the scene and then walked back in, she was wearing something even bigger and even more elaborate mm -hmm. in my child eyes would grow to the size of dinner plates. And I'm like, that, one day I want to wear that. And How old were you in 1999? That's when the movie came out, episode one. I wasn't on this earth yet. Really? Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, it's great to now? have different generations, you know? You've yes. got my, well, I guess we'd start with Ed's generation. Mm -hmm. That came out in 77. 20 years down the road, you got Justin and I's generation. Mm -hmm. And then, and then mine. 20 years down the road, you got Jillian. So it's, that's, that's why we have these panels We're all with inclusive. a diverse yeah. group. We yeah. have everyone. Do you have a favorite trilogy? I gotta say, the prequels. I really? love them. I, <gasps> I love them. T take away my Star Wars card, throw me out of a moving mm. ship. I love them. Can I, can I say something here? Is that people who are real, real, real star wars fans mm -hmm. that i know mm -hmm. i'm not talking about everybody just the, the people that i know that and they know a lot more than me you know i've read the books i've read the comic books mm -hmm. uh i've seen all the cartoons except freemakers there's people that know more than me out there and it's like where else are they getting this information <laughs> from and it's from the video games yeah you know which mm -hmm. there's tons of canon in the mm -hmm. video games they know way more than me their favorite episodes are the prequels mm -hmm. and my favorite episodes are the prequels and Jillian's as well and mm -hmm. she's like you know take away my Star Wars card but I think the people who know really 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 know the stories of Star Wars like the prequels because they're so inclusive of all the other they, you know they Do tie you think, everything together so well and include everybody too okay. so if you watch the original trilogy you just don't have as many characters you don't have as many uh, species or other storylines going on mm -hmm. You know, whereas the prequels include so much. I mean, mm -hmm. Do you think a new fan should watch them in order or in the order they came out? Good question. Um, in all honesty, there are the there are like the set timelines that people make. But as a Star Wars fan, if I was to give them all the movies, in I would just say, here are your movies. Just watch them. I'd say no? start with Episode Four. Watch Start four, five, four. and six, then go one, two, three. Because and forget about six, seven, and eight. <laughs> one of my favorite videos I think that's out there is a father had their kids watch them in like the order Ed just said. And when it gets to the part, spoiler alert, at the very end, it's like revealed you will become like Darth Vader. Mm -hmm. the, this guy's daughter's like, what? He was Vader? And it's like, but he was so cute. <laughs> and I'm like... Yep, that's how it happens. Yeah, it happens. <laughs> but see, going back onto like just that love of the prequels, something I feel that really helped expand that love with which in like in the Star Wars community was the animated series The Clone Wars. Because it brings in so many amazing characters. Like we were talking about the clones. Mm -hmm. It brings in all these clones. And it brings in like one of my personal favorite characters, Ahsoka Tano, mm -hmm. who we learn has builds this very amazing relationship with Anakin. Mm -hmm. And he becomes her master. And she learns so much. We get all these great characters that help feed into the storyline. So you have the characters that you know and love, like Luke, Leia, and then they slowly come into the timelines too. And with all the new Star Wars films that we have coming out, like The Mandalorian, that tied, we had, spoilers, we had Luke and Ahsoka in a, in a series together. Mm -hmm. And they just, they somewhat didn't cross paths, but they were like there with each other. And it's kind of like, that's your master's kid. 
you didn't get to see him, but he's there and you're still alive. And who knows what that universe is going to hold because she's getting her own series. Wow. That's some great insight from her. Yeah. She doesn't act this intelligent on the weekend. <laughs> I made you a hat. It's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's right. That was, that's and right. I very I appreciate it very much. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. All right, so let's get into the Lego yes. of it. Now, uh, Star Wars, of course, is a, the first licensed theme Lego ever got. It's one of, correct me if I'm wrong, Chris, it's one of three licensed themes that survived the um, palette swap from yellow to flesh tone, as far as I know, right? Star Wars, Harry Potter... And Spider-Man. Okay. There was that studio Spider-Man. I think that's it that were licensed that long ago that they made it to the... That's all I can think of. Let's just start. What do you guys so want to talk I, about? I, I guess what's really important about Episode 1 and Lego is that they came out at the same time. So yes. when Episode 1 came out, they came out with all your typical action figures that came out in the original trilogies. And they made a fortune off those action figures. I'm assuming. I mean, they were very popular, and they still are. But they, this is the first time they actually came out with Lego for Star Wars. Mm -hmm. And it was uh, 1999, and here's one of the original sets here. This is a uh, Darth Maul, Qui-Gon Jinn fight scene on Tatooine. And they've got the chrome lightsabers, which is killer. They've got Darth Maul's speeder bike. Which is kind of lame, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. I, even in the movie, the, his speeder bike was just like, you know, speeder bikes could be so cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But Darth Maul's was like just... It was more speeder, speeder moped. It was like a speeder scooter. seat. It, yeah, I was yeah. about to say, it looks like a recliner. All the 99 era sets look very blocky and primitive when you, when you compare them to today's sets. Oh, yeah. Lego just makes them better and better every year. So this is it's evolved. But but that is what is so good about the original Lego Star Wars sets is that they are blocky because today they're making the same Millennium Falcon and it looks just like the Millennium Falcon they yeah. made three or four years ago. Sort of, yeah. Whereas the first Millennium Falcon looks totally different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, one other thing that's interesting about this set, number one, what is that little thing in the back? Is that with the antennas? Is that a moisturizer i don't remember that um, from the movie it's like one of those water moisturizers i'm trying evaporator. to remember that scene evaporator yeah, yeah that's right because you see those all over tatooine but i just watched this movie recently and that wasn't there that wasn't in the scene i think they, they had just some extra... wanted to give you more pieces yeah it they... literally is just darth maul and qui-gon jinn fighting you know with the uh naboo cruiser in the background at the time did they come out with uh the episode one and original trilogy they did yeah okay. they came out with the original trilogy sets because i don't know if you guys remember but they they re-released the original trilogy in theaters bef leading up to I do episode remember one coming out yep so it was it was almost like seeing them for the first time again those were the remastered a, ones with the added scenes yeah they were a big big deal what's also neat about this darth maul it's called the lightsaber duel see that one by one plate modified mm -hmm. it's a little clip there that tan clip mm -hmm. only came in this set in tan <laughs> never yeah again. it's like a four or five dollar piece really yeah. mm -hmm. it's expensive and this was before they gave darth maul spikes on his head oh okay. he's got the hood there much like you do right now yes that little hood. yeah if you're just listening i do have my darth maul face on so we're skipping ahead a little bit what's the opening scene in episode one it's always a spaceship flying in space. Here we go. Every Star Wars episode. Well, it does. It opens up with a spaceship. We need to get that on the shirt for you. What? Star Wars opens with a spaceship? <laughs> yep. Star Wars opens. That's a <laughs> coffee mug. Right there. Yeah. And we do have a lot of Star Wars collectors and other minifigure collectors, and all they collect are the minifigures. They don't collect the ships or anything like that, because everything Lego takes up so much space. They so hang them from the roof. And as, good. as far as the Lego collector, Star Wars is the largest section in our store, probably. It takes up the most amount of space. We have more sets and minifigures for Star Wars. It also has run the longest yes. of any licensed the theme. Or, genre. But it's a popular genre. What are your guys' opinions of them continually redoing sets? I, I know they're improving it. Like you said about the um, Millennium Falcon. There's always going to be another Millennium Falcon. There's always going to be another Star Destroyer. What do you think of that? I think it's important for LEGO fans because there's new LEGO fans. So if I were a six-year-old kid and I'm just discovering Star Wars and I want to go get an Anakin Pod Racer set, the only ones out on the market are these discontinued, super expensive sets. So as long as they keep coming out with them, 
they can go mm -hmm. get them. They're attainable. Yeah. You know, in fact, speaking of the pod racer set, there's the, they just re released yeah, the pod racer set last year in the 20 years of Lego. Is it 20 years of Lego Star Wars? It would have to be. 20 years of Lego Star Wars, yes. And what's amazing about these 20th anniversary sets is that they are already really expensive. What's the price tag on that one, Jillian? $39.99. Oh, okay. That's not too bad. I There's, priced one yesterday. It was about the same size. It must have been the Snow The Slave set. 1 went up a lot. Yeah, the, the Slave, slave one, 1 is up the to 20th anniversary one. They're re releasing these sets that people can now get and they couldn't get before. How does that affect the after aftermarket of some sets? I know things like this that are very unique, the chrome pieces, that's not going to change when they re-release this. But like the Millennium Falcon, for example, they've re-released and re-released. Does that really affect the value of the older ones? Somewhat. In a good way or bad way? Uh, I think for the consumer, in a, in, a, in a good way, but the value doesn't drop that much because the minifigures will be different. There's always going to be a change. So that 7905 Millennium Falcon that has Vader, Leia, um, and a slew of other characters, uh, Luke Skywalker, Han, Chewbacca, you're not going to see that in the next issue of the Millennium Falcon. Mm -hmm. What you had, the latest one had the new guy that had his head cut off. Really cool looking alien guy with the horns on his head. I forget his name. Do you know his name? From the, he was episode eight or nine. He was the spy. He's in that Falcon set. Oh, okay. And Lando's oh, in that Falcon Julio. set. Okay. All right, yeah, that guy. Is that who it was? I'm bad with names, yeah, yeah. I think so. He's a really right. cool-looking figure, though, and he's expensive. But uh, you're always going to have different figures, a few couple changes. Like, you had three different Millennium Falcons come out in the in the span of those 20 years. Some of them had that blue tube in the back, the, the, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. engine part. You didn't get that later. In the middle of the ship, you had the hyperdrive, which was a special piece on one of the Falcons. I forget which issue it was. The one before 7905. Mm -hmm. You don't see that later on. So there's always different parts and different ways they work it up. But hey, a Millennium Falcon is a Millennium Falcon. If you have to have one, you can get one. And I'm, I'm glad that they release them every so often. Mm -hmm. What's frustrating with Lego is they keep releasing the same stuff. Like, oh, joy, another Naboo Starfighter. I can't wait to buy it. I already have three others that they already made. One after the other, every other year. Why not come up with stuff that is in the, in the prequels that they don't make? There's plenty of things that they don't make that they it'd be nice if they did make. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not Lego. I don't know how you guys do things, but I don't think it'd be very hard to just make different stuff. Well, I, I say, I've said this before, is Lego is so successful. They know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. So for us to question them... I know. Far be it for me. Just, we just don't know the things that they know. Well, well yeah. like he was saying, it does reintroduce old sets that a kid is just now discovering that they can then afford or their parents can afford rather than going back to the and old stuff. Sometimes it, so it doesn't affect the value too much unless it's the exact same okay. set. And they haven't re-released the exact same set in uh, Lego Star Wars that I'm aware of. Okay. Uh, so let's say they come out with a new Millennium Falcon. Uh, they advertise for that Falcon. Now more people want it. So they they buy the older one because if they can get it used, it's cheaper mm -hmm. and it looks the same as the new one. Um, so the values don't really fall that much on any of the Star Wars stuff. Oh, you're talking about open yeah. used. Now yeah. the the UCS Millennium Falcon uh, price tanked when they came out with the new one. So I, I remember it was the sealed. It was like thirty five hundred. Didn't we sell one? And we the, sold one uh, for thirty five hundred sealed. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and then it went down. It came out the next year, and it, the price went down to about twelve hundred. Right. Because they came out with the new one and it was so similar. Mm -hmm. And the old one was way overpriced anyhow because it had been yeah, so long. It was crazy. Mm. Yeah. How about the Death Star? So 10188 was the uh, Death Star playset mm -hmm. that they had. And they had that on the market for like six years. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah. Lego's got these things on the market for like nine months now. Mm -hmm. You know, but that thing was on the market for like six years. So that, I think they produced a lot more of those mm -hmm. than they normally do, a big set like that. And then when they came out with the new one, they it was better because they added 100 pieces to it and it had updated minifigures. Mm -hmm. You know, the figures from the original Death Star were just They're the relatively old, like, common yeah. figures that were in every set. Uh, minus the black purple droid. When they came out with the new Death Star, that it made it better. But people saw that there was an, a Death Star out there because of the marketing for it, and they started buying the old one. 
Got it. Yeah, so it really didn't affect that price either. Okay. In fact, people are asking for it like crazy now. So wow. Okay. It's still popular. Well, let's get back into our episode one stuff. What else do you want to show us? Or do you want to start with your favorites? Yes, let's start with our favorites. Okay. Now, we don't have a ton of episode one stuff. We Well, we do have a lot, but not as many as we normally have because Star Wars is so hot right now. Mm -hmm. We went to get a lot of sets, and we didn't have nearly as many as we normally do. Especially just for episode one. Yeah, but with that said, we are getting a collector is bringing his original 1999 Lego episode one sets in today. Every single one of them and selling them to us. Wow. So we'll and have them later today. A lot <laughs> of them are boxed. Right. In their original box is sealed. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And by the time you guys see this podcast, we would have had these <clears> for a week. But as of the recording of this video, it's, it's coming today. That yeah. is the MTT, yeah. that big set. The, the the first MTT they ever made, and I wish we had one. It was it was amazing. It's huge. It's very big. It's an expensive set now. And the frigate, right? The uh, That carried the two Jedi at the beginning of the movie. Yeah, that, I forgot about that one. That frigate, was that frigate, that was nice, too. Yeah. And they only made that one time. It was red in color. Mm -hmm. Jillian, what's your favorite set from episode one? Oh, my goodness. Um, Anything with Jar Jar, right? Right. Oh, of course. I mean, I come on. Something with Jar Jar. Um, the Gungan sub. Honestly, it's the pod racers. Because that's one of my favorite scenes. They made an older pod racing set that was huge. These pod racers are so much bigger than the other ones that they made. And then I also love that they make the little... Oh, like yeah. The poly bag versions of and them. You, do, 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 do. you got father and son right here. And that's uh, Sebulba's pod racer. The big, big one has very rare printed parts on it. Like that that guy right there. So I guess that's Sebulba's flag. What the made the race really thing. neat was the cinematic effects, the perspectives that they show you as mm -hmm. they speed through the, uh, the canals and, mm -hmm. and the, the caves. And the sound, the sound that these engines make. And what's interesting about Star Wars is for technologically advanced types of uh, spacecraft, they all seem to be fossil fuel burning technology. <laughs> but it makes it makes it fun because of the noise and the and the thruster. I mean, it was it's cool. It's cool, but it's interesting too. That's that's what we associate with uh engine noises. Yeah. So that's what the the Foley artists so, use for the movies. Yes, it's just it, it provides a good frame of reference for yeah. us humans. Yeah. <laughs> One one thing I noticed about the pod racing in episode one is mm -hmm. that Anakin is the only human in the pod race. Mm -hmm. And there's all these different aliens. You know, not one of them is the same. Anakin, as a human, is not your typical human. He has the highest midichlorian count in the universe. So what are they saying about humans? <laughs> They're not good at pod racers. <laughs> They're not good pod racers. They're speciesist. <laughs> We're That's slow. So yeah. Well, wait, he can see things before they happen. That's the force uh, in him. Right? Mm -hmm. He can see things before they happen, so he knows yeah. to make a turn to the right before he has to make a turn to the right, make a turn to <clears throat> it like dodge bullets like Matrix, right? Here's the other thing, is that considered cheating? Because if he has midichlorians, it, you know, in it's professional like sports, yeah. in professional sports in the Olympics, if you're doping, you can't play in the Yeah, but sport. he didn't shoot up with midichlorians <laughs> right before. He's naturally... Goes over to Qui-Gon <laughs> like, hey, help me out here. Oh, that's controversial. Bend over. That's good. That's a good point. Bend over, yeah. Anakin. Well, then in that case, it would also be like if you had no, he's them doing a swimming contest with the Gungans have an advantage. No, look at their feet. They're not even webbed. They're like stubby. And that's another thing I was wondering. How could these things swim with blocks for feet? Shouldn't they be webbed? I don't know, Ed. How can you swim? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'll be quiet. For that. <laughs> Sebulba's pod racer here, which this is a huge pod racer. It's big. He's got that chrome pipe on the back, mm -hmm. which is so cool. And they were coming out with the chrome lightsabers, mm -hmm. and then we've got the Naboo Starfighter here, which that's considered a UCS set. It, really? Yeah, it had a plaque and everything. Hmm. And it's just small. It's was chrome cool. rare at that time, or were they doing chrome all the time? Because I know these pieces are crazy the only rare. Yeah, they made chrome was in that year, and mm -hmm. I don't recall them making chrome again. They okay. stopped doing it. Well, it's expensive. It was to, to correct you. They did. There's TC14 the was in the uh, one of the first scenes in episode one. 
he is the protocol droid that served Qui Gon and, Qui -Gon and, and Ewan McGregor. And they made a Chrome Trooper too in 2011. The doors yeah. open, the battle droids were ready to attack, and then you see them walk out like, oh, my bad. This, this was 2012, the TC 14. But they okay. don't do that often, though. They don't, you don't see sets anymore that have Chrome in it. I think yeah. they made a. Didn't they make a Chrome set in a car? Or? Yeah, there's, they there's, used to have there's Chrome, chrome pipes. parts in cars. Yeah. They used to have Chrome pipes in right, regular, right, like right. older 90s sets mm -hmm. and stuff. But yeah, you know. One see reason, chrome. I, and I was told this by an employee at Lego is that the, the chrome is expensive for mm -hmm. one and it does wear off. I mean, if you look at any uh, used lightsaber hilt, uh, it's just the chrome has worn off on oh, it. Oh, and the so. castle stuff. They had chrome shields and swords yeah. and helmets and yeah. stuff. So it's like an electro the minifigures process. The little hand going into that little divot, it starts chipping over yeah. time. Yeah. And so I've got uh, friends that do custom minifigures and if they want something chrome, they have to have it done in Europe. Because that's where the professional, the best professional chromers are uh, in the United States. You just, you can't find people to chrome things. Hmm. And the you same can, thing is with guns. You can chrome it, but the problem is you can chrome metal. It's hard to chrome plastics. Oh. Because plastics will melt. I'm, I'm in the car. I used to be in the car business. So, I mean, we used to, use, it's a process. You electroplate the steel. You have to electric, you have to put a charge through it. And then it, it binds to the metal. And there's there's powder coating. You bake it in. There's things like that that you can do, but it's all done on metal. Yeah. Try doing it on plastic. Just melt. You'll melt yeah, you'll melt okay. it. So there's a process. I don't know exactly what the process is, but I know it's a. Uh, I think it's a little more tedious, and I oh, think okay. that's why Lego doesn't do it often. I mean, people can get away with it. Like as a cosplayer, I know with spray paints and different mm -hmm. like different powders we use to chrome different of our different props and stuff. We can get away with it, but it is very difficult to get it have that realistic shine yeah like the shine you can see on these sets are we can see our that's, reflection in them yeah that's real chrome do you think it's like a plastic like a plastic paper that's a like a metal paper that's electrified onto it something like, like a little foil <laughs> yeah no, it's, it's baked on think? It. oh it it's, is it's okay. or or the elect the electrocution i forget how it, how it works but it's like electroplating mm -hmm. it it binds to the the you put like a primer on that plastic and then it binds to that primer and okay. then you have that coating, that metallic coating on there. So, Ed, your favorite Star Wars set that they ever made from episode one? We don't one? have it here. It's that frigate that you saw at the beginning okay. of the scene that they blew up, which it's a big set. It's really cool. comes with the two pilots, Qui-Gon and young Ben, Padawan Ben. I just liked it. I thought it was really neat. That's the best one. The second best one is the MTT, which we don't have as well. How about you, Chris? Darth Chris? Well, I'll be honest with you, I'm not a huge fan of any of the episode one sets. The, as far as the, uh, the builds, <laughs> Your as far as the builds go, I mean, I've just seen so many pod racers. You know, mm -hmm. I, I love Sebulba's pod racer here, it's great. You know, and, and then the other ones that came in these series, I think you had Gascano's, uh, Aldar, was like a box Bido, set of three. maybe. Box set of three. Yeah, it's huge box, too. Mm -hmm. um, but we just we've seen them over and over again, and even Darth Maul, who's one of my favorite Star Wars characters, the Sith infiltrator that he flies is it's it's a little boring. It's for me. blocky. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a, they've made the Sith infiltrator many many times. Okay, I just thought of one, the Droidica back there, the Technic Droidica. I don't love the Technic figures, but that really works. Mm -hmm. I mean, it really does. It's so cool. So it actually rolls and pops up? Yeah, it does. It's got rubber bands, and it's it's old. It's probably from, two, what's the date on that? 2001, I'm guessing. The rubber bands on this one that we have here are not working correctly. 2000, it says. 2000, the okay. There it is there, but the, it takes like 16 rubber bands, and mm. these rubber bands are just shot. But that's a, it's just a really cool build. I didn't realize that you could actually roll it and it would pop up. Crazy it's kind engineering. Of like a Baca gun. Yes. <laughs> that's awesome. Oh my goodness. I never got one of those to work Oh yet. no. I'm never going to be able to unsee that. <laughs> these are, oh no. These are so cool in the movie, too. I mean, what's uh, Newt Gunray say? There are no match for droid the cars. Yeah, <laughs> that was pretty good. That, that was, was good. good. That was Thank good. You. Yeah, and they Four do. do they do run from them too, right? Yeah, they had to run from them. So they were no match for Droidicus. Mm -hmm. He was new. Gunray was right. It wasn't Newt. It was the other guy, the older guy. He was really scared. We, we should not go against the Jedi. And Darth oh, yes. Sidious was like, "Get this man out of my face," kind of thing. Uh, get him out of my sight, right? Yeah. Who, I don't know the name of that character, 
but he was standing next to Newt Gunray. It wasn't it at that time somehow, when he was like, if you can't do it, then they're I'll send. Uh, Nem Nemoidians. Yeah, right? somehow that Nemoidian knew about Jedi, and he knew how bad they were. Mm -hmm. Or bad they were. Can I say that word? No. Oh, well. The Moidians were smart, intelligent Sensibrate. beings. Of course they knew who the Jedi were. Right. I mean, the Jedi were, at that time, were very popular. And he you knew what Sith was, too. Across the galaxy. Yeah. So you, you were mentioning how Episode One especially gave us a ton of new aliens, mm -hmm. and a lot of those were represented in minifig form. Let's talk about some standouts for you. So what were some standout new alien minifigs that we got? Oh, Wano. you know what we forgot to sh introduce? I don't know if anybody noticed this, but when Pandamame Amygdala oh my goodness. went to the, the Senate mm -hmm. to put the Nemoidians, call them out on what they were doing, if you look around, they were voting on no confidence on Chancellor Valorum. If you look at the, oh, here we go. At, a, at a scene, you look down at one of the pods where the different aliens were, you'll see E.T. Yes, yeah. It'd be nice if Lego had made a... An ET in one of those pods. So the, you know. their race is actually called uh, I don't I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's Spielberg backwards. <laughs> <laughs> Why and not? The reason that they're in there is because George Lucas and Steven Spielberg made an agreement that uh, Spielberg would put Yoda in ET, where he's wearing a Halloween costume of yeah. Yoda, and George Lucas would put ET in. A Star Wars movie. And they're that's, buddies anyway. That's the story. They've worked on mm -hmm. Indiana Jones and other stuff. Before. Now, my stories aren't yeah. always accurate or correct, <laughs> obviously, but that's what I heard. We tell it like we hear it. <laughs> yes. Yes. From our own perspectives. So tell us about this little flying monstrosity over here. Ed's got a story about Watto. I think Ed would be the one to tell. Mm -hmm. Watching the movie, and I'm like, you know, that Watto guy sounds a lot like an Italian. <laughs> And my girlfriend's like, yeah, Ed, he, he looks a lot like you. <laughs> like, no, he doesn't. I would just like to say, from the first day I started working here, I didn't want to say it, but now that she has, I mean, it's on the table. I'm... So people come in the store, and I'm like, oh, you want to buy a Lego set? <laughs> I will not confirm or deny if the customer has said you that. You will sell me the set for less. No, I won't. <laughs> you <laughs> did it. You did it. You did it. What species was he? You're digging yourself a bigger hole here. What species was he? He was a Transdocian or something? No, that um, is a boss. That Watto, the original Watto, is very expensive figure, maybe $60. Just very unique looking. They didn't paint him, mm -hmm. which is really cool. His hands are that medium blue that only came with him, and he's just a really rare figure. I think he only came in Watto's junkyard. That's mm -hmm. it. It's the only set. And they never remade that, I don't think. They, they did make another Watto, which is way better because he's painted, and he's got short legs versus the long legs. What makes these figures is expensive and rare is if you take the top off hold on to the legs for me if you pull the top off <gasps> they break they break easy the yeah. wings break easy it's so. called a sandwich board and one of the problems with the way and this they're still making them like this but they're more rubbery so they don't break as easy mm -hmm. but if i'm pulling this off i'm going to grab it from his from the body right and then once it comes off my fingers press it in and break it. Mm. So that's why they, so like Ed did, you pull it from the head instead of the body. That's interesting to me that the old Watto commands a high price still, even though they came out with a much more superior one. Well, so, and that's another reason why the prices don't go down is because they come out with a new Watto and people are like, ooh, I want to get Watto. And then they're like, oh, there was an old Watto? Well, I got to have him too. You know, because they're collectors. collectors. There's a collector mentality. All the yeah. yeah, must have all the Wattos. And yeah, and that and it breaks my heart when little kids want a Lego set, and I try to steer them more towards the newer things that come out mm -hmm. that are more affordable than the older sets because once it, once they reach a certain age, they ripen, if you will, and the prices are way too high for a little kid yeah. to afford. And it, get a job, kid. Which is why I like <laughs> get a job, kid. <laughs> which is why I like Lego remaking things. It, it gives kids a chance to get something yeah. that they can have and they can play with. Kids want to play with their toys. Yeah. And collectors want to collect these things that break when kids play with them. I mean, a very common situation that I see with that is they'll have a kid come in and they'll go over to the Star Wars case and they'll see Boba and Jenga. And of course, their eyes go towards like 
the very first ones that are made, and they're like, that one. Yeah, they want the most expensive ones, too. And I'm like, that's my rent. Yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> but they, they made that blue Mandalorian warrior, mm -hmm. the generic one in the battle pack, and he's eight to ten dollars right. the death watch and yeah. so the parents are like i want that Django fed or that boba fed and i don't correct them yeah because i know what they're doing yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're, i've had we're a mom getting getting cheaper i figure. want that boba fed. <laughs> like, as a big star wars fan they're like the mom's like we'll be taking that Django," and i'll be like actually that's and she's like no no, it's, that, yeah. that is Django Fett. She steps that on is Django, Django. <laughs> you know, They like, all call them all Boba Fetts. Yeah. You know, they're all yeah. Boba Fetts. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. whatever. That's, that's what they are. You were mentioning your favorite. Big part of Star Wars for you were the costumes. Yes. And no one had the coolest costumes than Princess Amidala. Padme Amidala. So, oh, Panda Bear, right? Panda Mame. <laughs> Edamame. Yeah, Edamame. Um, so we have your the. On the phone you know, that what is that costume called? What do they call? Is that her royal costume well, or that's her, queen costume? Well, that's like the first in episode one. That's the first time we somewhat see her. She's on her throne amongst her council, and they're discussing what they're going to do. I'm right now blanking on the name of her costume, but that specific costume I've seen recreated in millions of different ways. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I know what it is. It's uh, Queen okay. Amidala's costume. Oh, yeah. Yes. You're right. Thank you so much. Um, <laughs> but I've seen people do the bottom little parts of her dress of LEDs. Mm -hmm. I've seen so many different variants of it. And with the minifigure, what I love about it is how wide they made the base of her skirt. Mm -hmm. It's like a full circle. And I love that because it replicates how her dress in the film it was a whole it looks like a very space like hoop skirt mm -hmm. like they used to have like where you put the hoop skirt underneath it and you lay the dress on top with that one flared out so i was very curious before i even knew about the lego set i was like how are they going to make that into an action figure and they did it and so what's interesting about this mm -hmm. this is not padme because padme was a, a handmaid a handmaid in correct right so this is actually the actress who this is. This is her second Lego minifigure. Do you know who it was? No. I do. Kira Knightley mm. from Pirates of the Caribbean. Oh, really? Yeah. Swan, Elizabeth Swan. Yeah, so she yeah. she played that handmaiden in the, where they switched yeah. roles? Oh, okay. Yeah. I didn't realize that was her. So she was, uh, that was uh, Queen Amidala. And apparently they looked so much alike that uh, people couldn't tell them apart. Oh, on the set? two actresses, yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. And I could see that. Have you ever attempted to make a Amidala costume? Yes, I have. Oh, wow. I've <laughs> attempted about five or six of her <clears throat> outfits. Three were successful. One drove me into the corner, rocking back and forth. Um, <laughs> was it that one? Yes. Um, it was also that one that, funny enough, I went to go and make that costume. And I saved up and saved up because I knew it was going to be a very high-priced costume. Mm -hmm. And I go to make the transaction at the fabric store, and I get a call from my bank. And they're like, hey, someone's trying to spend, mom, sorry, someone's trying to spend $400 at a fabric store on your card. We just want to make sure that, is this you? And I'm like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and it was in that moment I had to rethink, do I really want to do yeah. this? But at that point, it was already all cut. Yeah, yeah. And I still have all the fabric for that costume. It's half made. One day, I want to complete it. But I've made some of her outfits from the Clone Wars because they're, in my opinion, they're very, like, simplistic. It's something that, something very common in the cosplay community is closet cosplay, where you just grab items from your closet that you think resemble the character and you can do that a lot with Padme and that's one thing I love about her <laughs> that's what I do for my costumes for these videos <laughs> I just grab what I have in my closet you do a great job with cosplay thank you you really look good in your costumes just tell us how would you do the hair how in the world okay. would you even attempt that so there are multiple ways you can do it some people I've seen 3d print it they've 3D really printed this this started from the top and just found the shape and then what they do is they drape wefts of like wig hair mm -hmm. over on top of it so that way it just looks like there's all that hair because making a wig like that just with that volume yeah. of hair is insane mm -hmm. and that would be super duper heavy mm -hmm. so what we do is we find something to drape the hair around so we people have done 3d printing people have done like 
chicken wire I've seen people mm -hmm. mold it out to of. To make it lighter. Mm -hmm. yeah. Styrofoam. There's so many different ways. Like the insulation foam will carve it up, mm -hmm. make it a headpiece. I don't remember what my method was going to be, but I knew it was going to make me cry. Yes. Your real hair? <laughs> That's not possible. <laughs> I mean, there are multiple different <clears throat> hairs that Padme has that I could possibly try and do with my hair. But with that one, it's definitely building like a whole headpiece around it, mm -hmm. much like the Ahsoka Tano headpiece. Mm -hmm. A lot of people mold it out of clay and then go over it with latex. Mm -hmm. Some people just make it out of foam with patterns. People can get really creative yeah. with their costumes. It's very much a trial and error process yeah. for all of us. And what's great is that a good amount of the community is willing to show their failures and show their successes, and they're willing just to give tips and help yeah, and to share how this is how I did it. Favorite minifig for you? Is it Darth Maul? No, believe it or not, it's not Darth Maul. Okay. Yeah, he's just kind of a normal figure, right? He's just got even with the legs, horn crown, torsos, and the, the crown's cool. Well, yeah. Well, you know, totally um, loses the legs. I I kind of <laughs> like these older Star Wars figures that are just all one piece. There's they made all Darbito and they made Sebulba, and they're just all one piece figures. And they're just weird, you know, and that's why I like them. Kind of like a piece, and you could probably use that piece for something else. Like, they use stuff like this for modular buildings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So could you imagine that being part of the architecture? Yeah. Gargoyle. Oh, yeah. That is a gargoyle. Building. How much is that guy? Uh, he's got to be 20 or $30 wow. for that Sebulba. And then, of course, they made the more modern style Sebulba here that has the posable legs and... He was in two sets. He was in this set yeah. here, right? And then he also was in a uh, little globe. Little yeah, it's right there. Mm -hmm. Mini build. That's his pod racer yeah. right there. Okay. The, the Micro Planet series. There's a Tatooine right there. And they also made Naboo. They made a Death Star, too. Had they? Naboo they made a Death Star. Okay. They made Yavin. They made all the planets. These planets, the planets were really neat. I mean, there's just so much you could do with them. Mm -hmm. But we don't do anything with them. We've got boxes of these. Hopefully they, they become really valuable. Somehow. Okay. But oh. you could make, plant, you know, um, what do you call them, the planetarium things mm -hmm. yeah. for your... Did they come kids. with a set inside? Is that how yeah. the sets yes. were packaged? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So you said we've got a ton of just the planets just without the, planets. the sets? Just the planets, yeah. We and they're not that much? offer them as party favors for mm -hmm. our birthday parties that we had where you could actually fill them up with the leg oh. bulk, bulk Lego and take that home. The only one that's really valuable is the Death Star. Mm -hmm. They made that little Death Star. It's perfect for micro scale. There were was, didn't they release some in Europe that only were only sold in Europe, like Planet Hoth? Hoth was only mm -hmm. available just, in Europe, and that wow. one's really expensive, yeah. too. Do we have one of those? We do. We don't right now, but we've okay. had them before. Yeah. A really clever idea I saw on Pinterest is someone had a bunch of those, and they used them as, like, Easter eggs for the holidays. Awesome. Like, oh, that's cool. It's one of my favorite figures. I mean, I have a lot of favorite figures. Ara Singh. Ara Singh, yes. Ara Singh is she really cameo Hunter. appearance. I love her hair. The pod her, she's got that big, long ponytail. And I think she's. this is unique to her. They've never put that that, that specific ponytail on anybody else. She's a Force-sensitive. Uh, she was a Padawan. And she was in the, the... I guess her first appearances were in the comic books. The I don't graphic know. That's, novels. that's new to me. That's when we first heard about her. It was in the graphic novels. And then uh, you see her in Clone Wars, animated series Clone Wars. She has a whole arc with young Boba Fett. Through right. that one. Right. The, the bounty hunters get some of the greatest arcs throughout all of Clone Wars. And I love Aura Singh. The style of her species, they have the long fingers that like extend out maybe six or seven inches. And it's just such a great character design that they all have. She's kind of creepy. Yeah. She's very creepy, yeah. very backstabbing bounty hunter. Yeah. She's a great shot. And she's, she's in episode one. She is. She's in the. She, you can see her the during the no. in, like on the cliffs during the pod racing Cliff scene. Side, right as the they're making a sharp turn, you see her peering over the edge. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's something that I love to get to see because it's like. There she is. She's not just in the animated series. There's so much going on in the pod race. Yeah. There's uh, Tusken Raiders, which I guess we could have included. They never put Tusken Raiders in any episode one sets that I can remember. Mm -hmm. But they could have because they were in episode one. You know what would have been neat if they made a Lego minifigure of that two-headed announcer guy? Oh, yeah. Which was really yeah. funny. He was really cool. 
or they were really funny, they were really cool. They never made him, it's sad. That's another character I could see you as, Ed. Yeah. Which one? That'd be a good one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, you change up on us sometimes in the store, depending on how late in the day it gets. Yeah, it depends on how late in the day and if I have my coffee. Oh, yes. <laughs> so we've heard what characters that Ed re resembles or reminds us of, but what is your actual favorite minifigure? Gosh, my actual favorite minifigure, it, from episode one? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I like I like the Queen Amidala. Yeah, it, it only came she only came in one set, mm -hmm. the Gungan subset. I think she's beautiful, just yeah. really nice looking minifigure. They've got to put her in another set eventually. It'd be nice, you if know. You it'll, it'll look totally different, probably. Mm -hmm. A cloth skirt would be cool. More somehow. detail, mm -hmm. um, maybe. You see a lot of fakes of her out there, right? right? So if you ever that. do have one of these, okay. every piece says Lego on it. So if it doesn't say Lego, it's not real. That's something I've loved about working at the store. Now, whenever I'm out at like a flea market or something and I see someone and they're like, oh yeah, this is, and I see a figure like that one I've seen multiple times. And they're like, oh yeah, this is authentic Lego. I'm like, yeah, okay, well, <laughs> let me see it. And I'm, then I'll walk away and I'll be like, Mm -hmm. nope. After being doing nope. this for a while, you can see fake Lego a mile away. Yeah, it you can feel it when so you different. pick it up. It's yeah. a skill you pick up yes. working here at the store. She came in the Gungan sub, which, in my opinion, is uh, just a, another, like I said before, all these episode one sets are just eh. Mm -hmm. you know? But that came later. That didn't come out in 1999. She came out in a later set. I believe in 2011, maybe 2012, mm. and it was a neat set. It was, uh, I think, retail was like sixty, seventy dollars, mm. and it was really cool. It was still a Gungan sub, uh, but it was a Gungan sub. <laughs> yeah. He's so right here. We do I have hear you. So we do have a Gungan sub. Well, we're looking at that. What is your favorite minifigure? Well, thank you for asking. Oh, she's interviewing the interviewer. <laughs> when I saw the movies, you know, I had seen the original mm -hmm. trilogy as a child, and. You know, Darth Vader was, of course, what I remember, mm -hmm. and I like the the space wizards are what yes. I attract to, not so much the spaceships or the laser guns or all that. So seeing that for the first time, what stood out to me so much was Ray Park as Darth Maul. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, and. The going from two old men poking each other with sticks to have a a, a, a martial artist. Mm -hmm. perform and choreograph these amazing fight scenes. Great fight scenes. That's, Great fight and scenes. then you had that score, the Duel of Fates, oh. playing oh. over it. That whole scene seems like from a different movie mm -hmm. to me. So the guy who always stood out to mm -hmm. me is that guy right there, Darth yeah. Maul. Um, and it was also, it was interesting because the new movies did not follow in that suit of, mm -hmm. of the style of fight scenes. Mm -hmm. I think it's because it almost dates the movie in a way because during the late 90s, early 2000s, that was the big invasion of Hong Kong style action mm -hmm. in American cinema. And they were definitely riding that train with those fight scenes. And then later in the, in the movies we have now, it's much more realistic. It's much more European mm -hmm. style of sword fighting with the lightsabers. But at the time, man, the people are flipping over. He's throwing it behind his back. He's doing all this crazy stuff, and it just blew me away. One of the interesting things that they did within this last season of The Clone Wars, mm -hmm. um, with the technology we've gotten, we've gotten all this really cool motion capture mm -hmm. like technology that we're able to use now, and they brought Ray Park in for his fight with us, for his, like, big final fight with Ahsoka, they had Ray Park get in the mocap suit and do all the motion capture. So, in my opinion, that truly helped bring the animated Darth Maul back to life yes. for this last season of this great series. And then another fun little fact about the Darth Maul character design, when he went in for makeup for filming, Ray Park had a little silver earring in his ear that they, he forgot to take out. And once they were done filming, they are like, what is that? That was in, in our designs. And they're like, and then like makeup's like, oh no, we forgot to take that out. But I, George Lucas liked it. So that is now a canon little detail of Darth Maul that he has a little silver really? earring. Oh, I didn't know that. Is yeah. that. Does that appear in the Clone Wars and stuff? Have they been I mean, that detail to animate? I believe so, yes. I remember because I noticed because Ray Park has gone to like, multiple conventions mm -hmm. and at conventions, he'll do all that lightsaber spinning still. Some A fan will walk up to him like at Atlanta Comic Con with a lightsaber and it's like, show me what you got. And he's kind of like, here we go. Yeah. And he'll just go out there and just start spinning on the floor and we're all like, oh. Yeah. That would be awesome to see. 
to see a little kid's eyes just go like, yeah. I know what I want to be when I grow up. <laughs> I want to be a Lord of the Sith. <laughs> he was snake eyes, too. Mm -hmm. He he yeah, did. Too. He was really hot. I forgot what else, but there was a lot of stuff he did at the time. So, oh, um, Headless Horseman. Mm -hmm. He okay. did all the choreography for that um, movie as well. Talk about a cool guy. So, he was like the it thing at the time. S mm -hmm. Speaking of Darth Maul, there's the uh, Darth Maul ah. head mm -hmm. from the buildable minifigure. And his yeah. eyes, that's one of my favorite traits that Darth Maul has, is those like Sith burning eyes that we eventually end up seeing in Anakin. But I think that was the first time we really got to see those eyes and the character. And I was like, whoa. In my opinion, it just enhances the species. Now, his, his species, they have full body tattoos, right? Yes, markings, yes. So what color is his actual skin? Is it red or black? Well, you see it in the Clone Wars. They are yellow and red. They're the two different colors. Um, Savage Opress. Savage Opress. Was yellow. And that was one of this, the markings on their faces, they vary. But they, and they also the horn sizes that they all have vary as well. In the Clone Wars, I believe, as Savage gets more powerful, his horns get even more jagged and mm -hmm. bigger. So they tattoo the black on them, or is that part of their mm -hmm. skin? That's part of their skin. Oh, You know, okay. like reptiles have that pattern to them like certain okay. king snakes have that type mm -hmm. of red and black pattern to them that's how you would see them. i always heard they were tattoos so that's, that's what people thought pattern. that's what okay. people assumed but when you look at the comics expanded universe, expanded universe with yeah. Cade skywalker who is the son or grandson of luke skywalker darth talon darth nil darth talon is a twi'lek who has those same red mm -hmm. and black patterns and who's the other guy? The the squid face guy. What's his name? Darth Nil Nilus? Nilus? Nilus. Nilus is not no, that. No, no. No, you're right. Um he's a squid looking guy. He's all red. He's got the black and red patterns. I mean it's a really cool looking pattern. Yeah. But you see that in the expanded Ma universe. Malevol. Comic. Malevol. Yeah, that guy. Darth Malevol. And, yeah. and then uh, you got Darth Malady. No, oh, that's right. another is she a Twilight? No, uh, no. Uh, Darth uh, Darth Talon is the only Twilight, I believe, in that group. Another character you see the facial markings on, and I believe, at least with this character in this species, with Ahsoka Tano, her species, which I'm blanking on right now, their face markings, they grow over time. Tagra. So, yeah. Tagrin. Yeah. They grow over time. Like, you see her start off, well, you get to see her start off as a really youngling mm. in a flashback, and they're so small, and as you see her grow up in the Clone Wars, you see them start to grow out onto her face. And when we get into Rebels, like they're longer, they've like extended all the way back. And it's very interesting. And that also goes for their head montrails as well. They grow as they age, mm -hmm. which is a really interesting trait and character style that I mm -hmm. love. What do those things do? Is what do you mean brain what tissue do? in there? Is it hair? Is no, it... they're a Wi-Fi box. <laughs> So I, I know that's with, where her lungs are. <laughs> I know with the Twi'leks, uh, I was reading a book where Dengar is part cyborg. The Empire took out his emotions to make him an assassin. Only uh, he has a Twi'lek girlfriend, and he likes her because she can take her tentacle and hook it up to him in his cyborg port or whatever, and he can feel her emotions. So that's one thing that those tentacles are for, okay. the montrails are for on the Twilight. Interesting. Um, actually, something very interesting that I just learned, actually. The montrails are, I believe, solely associated with, like, the Sukatano species. The montrails are the bits on the top. So they're, like, the little points. Twi'leks have Liku, which are the longer little, like, noodle-like. In the costume community, we call them space noodles. <laughs> the noodle-like parts of their head. And Ahsoka has both. Because mm -hmm. they long, they go long down, and then she also's got you know little nubs. So what's Ed have here? Are these Liku or are they Montreal? I mean, it's something else with Ed. <laughs> <Can> you... <laughs> don't put that ears. up into me. I don't want you feeling my emotion. Hey, I'm right here. So <laughs> they're useless rabbit ears. They don't do anything. Speak. So speaking of. Jar Jar Binks and the Gungans. Here's the first Gungan warrior. They didn't paint his face, so the Gungan warrior and Jar Jar share the same head. Mm -hmm. Here's Jar Jar right here. It is. You have a very interesting family tree, Ed. Yeah. Little underwater scene here. You know, the first thing I thought when I saw the uh, Gungan was, as a kid, Marvel had the license for Star Wars to do the episode four. They had three mm -hmm. comics come out, or four of them come out, a series of four comics to do episode four, and then after that. <laughs> they started making a series of what mm. the adventures of Luke Skywalker and Han Solo and what happens with them after episode four that would lead up to episode five. Episode seven, Han Solo is doing a freelance thingy mm. with a group of ragtag uh, bounty hunters, if you will, 
and one of them looks like Bugs Bunny for real. That is green. It's a green bunny. Oh, in yeah. A space time suit. he's brought up yeah. Bugs Bunny. Yes. In yes. yes. <laughs> and that's the first thing I thought of when I saw the, uh, the Jar Jar. I'm like, okay, maybe they're bringing that bunny back. But that bunny was a cool bunny <laughs> in, in that comic book. This bunny is like, like I said earlier, messed up. Was he like, yeah, what's up, Doc? <laughs> oh, he was, he was, um, I guess he, he got killed off. A lot okay. of those guys got killed uh, off. One guy was half robot, half, half machine. It was neat. hunting for Wabbit. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Out here in space, they still have Wabbit hunting. Anybody can ever look it up and find those comics. They're, they're really good. I, I thought they were really, they were good, but I was a kid when I was reading them. And yeah. I, I thought they were neat. And well, we'll have to start a book club, Ed. Yeah, we should. We Comic should. book club. Yeah. Yes. Do you guys want to take a quick break? I expect to see you in that tomorrow morning. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. Yes. Right and early tomorrow. You know, it fits really good. Did you? How'd you get my head measurements? Because it's not really tight at all. While you were sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that one time you invited this over to watch Game of Thrones? Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. I got some knowledge. <laughs> I went in there with a game plan for the future. <laughs> I knew one day I would one make day. a Gungan I mean, Charger well, I, uh, beanie. <laughs> my opportunity, the one thing I've been looking for my entire life. This is the prophecy. I have foreseen this. Yes. Oh, no, she you didn't. Oh, no, you didn't. So what, what do you guys think of the whole turning the force into microscopic bacteria in your blood? Was There's that dumb or was that cool? Dumb. Have you seen that skit? <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen that skit from uh, Robot Chicken? Yes. Oh my god. Where, where Darth Vader is like, yeah. I am your father. That's impossible! Yeah. And uh, the Me force is just a bunch of midi chlorians. That's <laughs> improbable. <laughs> and, and the Leo's empire was crushed by Ewoks. <laughs> <laughs> Look, if you don't hey. need to take this seriously, hey, Ewoks. You know, so don't fun. count those little murder bears out. <laughs> murder <laughs> bears. They are. Okay, there's this game yeah. called Ewok Hunt where it makes mm -hmm. them like the bad guys and then you can play it in VR. I had a nightmare for a week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I'm not lying. The sad thing is I'm not kidding. I went home for one night. I love that murder bears. <laughs> <laughs> they had rocks and sticks, and they wiped out all the yeah. biker scouts. We need her for episodes two and episodes three. Yes. I will supply costumes yes. for all the episodes. Excellent. <laughs> You're getting a new hat every week. I, I can't I can't <laughs> wait to see what the next one's going to look like. <laughs> We're going to start mounting them on the walls. <laughs> Like trophies, like head trophies. <laughs> my, my latest kill. Yeah. When we become famous, we can auction this off. That's the right. That we can all will. sign them. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Well, we didn't get to the Gungan shit. We had it in the other room. Let's show that off, because that is strange and unique. So this is the Tell first that. one they made, the Gungan sub. It's cool because it's the old white grays, it's the old dark grays. Mm -hmm. You got some printed cockpits there, printed um, hinge pieces. There's a translucent thing in the back because the Gungans had all these uh, little bubbles, bubble things, and technology and stuff like that. Yes, technology. Um, <laughs> this this turns and looks really cool. The back of it there with the hoses, and then you've got an anchor in the front, of course, because blue. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's an underwater ship. What I liked, and this is, of course, the mo more modern one is the one that came with Queen Amidala, mm -hmm. and you also had some pretty cool. Uh, Qui-Gon Jinn figures and Ewan McGregor figures. Yeah, the so. first releases had the yellow heads. Now this was really cool how they're underwater and they've got those big monsters that come yes. chase the ship and then uh, get eaten by a bigger monster and that kind of reminds me of the scene in episode 5 where yeah, they're yeah, escaping Hoth and the Falcon and there's big, inside the planet, mm -hmm. there's mm -hmm. big uh, creatures chasing them. Talk about the space worm? Yeah. Yeah, it just kind of reminds me of the same concept, you know? I love how the nickname for everything in Star Wars is the space whatever. The space mm -hmm. worm. Well, he was the, in space, space in asteroids. Yeah, yeah, space like swords. Space wizards. Space, space wizards. I mean, space the Gungans, robot, yeah. Ed, you were talking about how space stupid fish. the Gungans were, but yeah. they, they had to have been relatively intelligent to have technology like this. I have this. a theory on that, Chris. And here's, my, oh. here's the other thing, is they're living in this bubble <laughs> underwater, right? But they're underwater creatures, or are they not? Can they they're, breathe water? They're like Correct. amphibians? Amphibious? I think, I think they another have, yeah. ancient builder race came and created this civilization. Oh my gosh. And the Gungans were just swimming around going, oh, the, the, the ancient builder race decided to leave because they got bored and they took off. Maybe they went to Naboo, uh, the mainland, and decided to live on the mainland. And these 
froggy things were swimming around going, oh, what's uh, this? <laughs> I go live here now. And that's what they did. He may not be. You've thought uh, about this a lot. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he yes. just lays there at night. Like, <laughs> Thank you. Oh, they have done it, man. Yeah. Just, you should write a book about it. I call should. It, like the origin. The theory. Species. The yeah. theory of the Gungans. Yes. Actually, just that Gungans. may not be that far off because there's theories that the ancient Egyptians that that was an inherited technology. What we know as the ancient Egyptians, there was actually a much older race that uh, did a lot of that stuff. Because the earliest recorded things we have of the ancient Egyptians were at the height. Mm -hmm. And it, it declined after that. It so, declined yeah. after a while. But if you read Plato's uh, Timaeus and Critias, um, he talks about Solon who went to um, hang out with the ancient priesthood, the, the priesthood of, of ancient Egypt. And they told Solon <laughs> how far back the generations went. And they're going back like 35,000 years. And they're saying that the Greeks are, are like children because they only talk about one great flood, for there were many. And every time there is a great flood, you lose all your men of letters. And <laughs> is this going to be on the exam? Right. We're going to cut this out of the... Is this uh, going to okay. be on the test? So here's back to Spider-Man <laughs> Star Wars Episode 1. Here's the Kadoo. We'll talk about that later. Yeah, it's a really cool... You don't want him. The Kadoos are neat. I like their name. I like the fact that I know their name because it makes me feel like I'm smart. They just uh, look like really big dumpsters. People are like, the what the heck are these things? Live? Like, how do they eat? What do they do in a bubble under the water? Do these things swim? All good well, questions. Well, we you don't know, see them you underwater. Know, we don't, no. We don't. Well, we see them up on the land. Right, right. And, yeah. and what a great general Jar Jar is. The bombs hit the, the, the shield and, and Jar Jar's going, steady, steady. <laughs> like, oh, wow. Thank you, general. <laughs> well, speaking of generals, you got General tarpaules where it was a commander or mm -hmm. captain whatever there's tarpaules right there and he's really cool because he's got some cool coloring on him he's got some really, really cool neat. detailing yeah he's got a cool costume he's a neat character and i, I kind of like his mustache that he has and uh, mm. he's got those tendrils hanging off to make him look like a mustache you know a lot of military commanders have mustaches <laughs> What are we talking about? <laughs> Actually, it looks kind of like a General Jar Jar right General now. General Jar Jar, yeah. <laughs> I didn't say it. It wasn't me, but I'm not going to say it's wrong. And then we do have, I think we've got a Qui-Gon Jinn with a, uh, the breather on so that he mm -hmm. could be underwater. And the that, little space snorkel. That might be a snorkel. I can't remember which set that came with. It might have been the Gungan sub. The Gungan yeah. sub uh, okay. with the Queen... Uh, Amidala. He's probably got a reversible head where you can does. flip it around and it's a normal one. And young Ben side. has one too. They came with Ben, Jar Jar, Qui-Gon, and Queen Amidala. And it was a really nice looking Gungan sub of all the subs that were made. That was the best one they made. Now Liam Neeson is hardcore. Like mm -hmm. he is, he plays such a good Qui-Gon Jinn. Mm -hmm. Like I couldn't imagine anybody else being in that role, especially after you haven't watched him. Mm -hmm. And Ewan McGregor plays the perfect Ben Kenobi. I don't know if he's really that much shorter than... Uh, he is tall in real life. Mm -hmm. is he's he pretty tall. tall. He looks like 6'4". With something. his robes on and everything. Yeah. I mean, he looks like a big guy. Excited for the Kenobi series. And then it's amazing. You watch, mm -hmm. yeah. you watch Ewan McGregor in episode one, and it's like, he looks so young. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, he's got a baby face almost. And then in episode two and three, all of a sudden he's got this beard and he starts looking like Obi-Wan Kenobi. It's yeah. like, how did they know he was going to have that nice beard? Yeah. And, and that was part of the screen test, I'm sure. Do. You know, because yeah, not everybody can grow a nice looking, yeah. solid it might be beard fake. like that. It might be fake. It might be makeup. Don't, I don't ruin know. the magic. It could be. I would say that Ewan McGregor is probably my favorite Star Wars actor of all time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. he, Good one, he yeah. He definitely is. See, there's a... TV show that he did where he he and a friend of his rode motorcycles yes. from Scotland down <clears throat> to South Africa. It's just a reality show about them riding and they did South America too, I think, mm -hmm. or they're going to do South they, America. They they uh, rode across the world too, mm -hmm. the, the other way. One was the long trip down, and the other one was the long trip okay, around. Yeah. One of our most popular TikToks is us. Does it's like a day at Atlanta Brick Coat, and it's all sounds of Obi-Wan Kenobi and Ian McGregor. It's just, it's one of my favorites that we did. And just at the very end, there's a clip from the show he did. It's like, we're looking at sea otters. And that was just a great fun video to film. Yeah, he, he really is a cool guy. Uh, so they were at where they filmed the Tatooine scenes on this motorcycle ride down in uh, Northern Africa. And there's all these people touring the Star Wars site. And here he is just walking around. Yeah, <laughs> no one recognizes yeah. 
And I think he loves that. Yeah. You know? And then they were in Europe somewhere. He was uh, the voice of the robot in the robots cartoon. Mm -hmm. And he's picks up a magazine with it had just come out and shows it to the camera. And of course, nobody's recognizing him and he loves it. So he's probably my favorite character. He also made lightsaber noises while during the fight scene. Yes. <laughs> yes, that is something that they had to get on to him about. They talk about he talks about it a lot at panels. He's like, yeah, I kept getting in trouble because every time I swing my little sword, I go <laughs> and I have to go in. Stop it. <laughs> That's awesome. But unfortunately, we don't have any Obi-Wan Kenobi minifigures. He must be popular. Any mm -hmm. of the young Obi-Wan mm -hmm. Kenobis. Um, what I did like is the Padawan braid. Yes. It makes me wonder why people don't have Padawan braids in real life. Well, that people I just did think in the like, 80s. I re yeah. Well, I Rat remember tails. in elementary yeah. school, a bunch of people had Padawan braids. And they became a distraction. So the school sent out a letter and they were like, please remove your kids' Padawan braids. <laughs> <laughs> and I've ever seen a bunch of people so upset. Eddie I mean, Murphy had one in Coming to America. <laughs> he was he was out. a Jedi in training. That's right. That's right. We didn't know that. <laughs> I can picture one day us coming into work and then just seeing Ed with like a little yeah. pat on. He's like, hey guys. Yeah. Yeah. When the mullets come new? back, I'll you wear my You would be his master, though. <laughs> Okie doke. <laughs> <laughs> so my favorite actor, I think, would be, uh, I forget his name now. I'm so sorry. Uh, the guy that played Palpatine. And the reason mm -hmm. why is because a, a big critique for the prequels is that the dialogue is so stilted and cheesy and awful. But it doesn't sound that way mm -hmm. coming out of the mouth of Ewan McGregor That's true. and Palpatine. That's true. They could make that really hilariously bad dialogue sound amazing. They were both so good and so natural. I watched this whole video I talked about the art of campy acting, and they, yes. they specifically <laughs> talked about the guy who played Palpatine, how he is so, he can go from super creepy subtle to maniacally wringing his hands and cackling in a second, and he's so good. And Ewan McGregor can do that too. He didn't have as much opportunity to be as over the top in those movies, but yeah, I would agree with you, Ewan McGregor is amazing. Yeah, you're also dependent on your writers to a degree. Yeah, and it, you know, when like you said, Palpatine guy can really make uh, lemonade out of those lemons. Oh my goodness, he was squee he was like Chick Fil A, squeezing yeah. so much lemonade. That's a mm. gift as an actor like to Chick be able to be like, you have this character, but you know, you just go in with it yes. with a voice that once we say cut, you yeah. just go talk regularly. Yeah, those two actors, I think, in the prequels looked like they were having more fun than anyone mm -hmm. else. Well, there's this one little <clears throat> gift that I use constantly, and it's of when they were in their ships, and it's just Ian McGregor just enjoying his life. <laughs> and I use that constantly. They'll be like, Jillian, are you paying attention? And all I can think of is, yeah. that's me right now. <laughs> Ed will be like, can you get a set for me? And I'm like... <laughs> yeah. Jillian, where's Jillian? Jillian! I need a PA system in the store, Chris. Here we have three Qui-Gon gens up here. We've yeah. got the original in yellow with the yellow head mm -hmm. uh and then we've got the uh remake in light flesh and then we've got him and his poncho from when he goes to tattooing the uh poncho is neat i mean that's kind of a, a cool touch yeah. i'm kind of surprised they made that version of that is Qui -Gon something Jin. i love about star wars they somehow managed to slip ponchos and it seems they like really every do, yeah. little like I guess little section. They had them in the most recent films with Ray. Qui Gon had them. I think no, they have yeah, they had them on Endor. They gave Leia one on Leia Endor. Lego Lego you think they Lego just had a crate of ponchos? Like ah, yeah, throw yeah. this on. And the, the Clone Wars was Ahsoka a had one. Yeah. That or just walked out of makeup and forgot to take it take it off. And yeah. they're like, we'll find a way. Yeah, 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 yeah. Qui Gon Jinn has that really cool hairpiece that only mm -hmm. came with him, and it gets stress marks really easily. The uh, sides of it mm -hmm. they changed it they they changed it a little bit, little bit. okay it's just uh number one i guess a change was they went from brown to reddish brown mm -hmm. so uh, that's a difference there but they changed the mold but they right? added a, yeah they did mm -hmm. change the mold they added a little tiny bit of detail just okay. a tiny tiny bit it's almost like they took the original and they just kind of cut deeper lines in it. They took a little toothpick and they were like, really? details. I didn't know they were different. Yeah. I didn't know they were different. That's it's something just, you can notice with a lot of hairs mm -hmm. of minifigure. I think they do, They did the same thing with um, that Padme figure that we got over there. You can you can tell that the mold dot, wherever they cut it off the sprue, is in a different spot. In the newest one, it's in the middle of the head. On the old one, it's on the side of the head. Hmm. 
But I like that hair. It looks good on him. Yeah. It's uh, Jon Snow's hair from Game of Thrones, too. <laughs> he copied Qui-Gon Jinn. Yes. I'd love to see a battle between Qui-Gon and Jon Snow. I'd love to see oh, that. I think Jon Snow would lose. Qui-Gon would kill him again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah again. Right and again. again. It'd be great. <laughs> well, we've got the Naboo guards. They're mm-hmm. really, they have really cool uh, costumes, I think. That's uh, Captain Panaka, and Lego doesn't name him in the Lego set. Actually, it's, uh, they just call him Naboo Commanders. Oh, okay. Their hats are really cool. The yellow version came it's out a few years ago with an MTT, right? A smaller version mm-hmm. of an MTT. He was in there. He was only in that set. Actually, talking about our favorite episode one Lego sets, the MTT might have been it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we just mm-hmm. don't have one. They're so popular, we don't have one of them. It was really neat because you could turn the crank on the side and the front door would open. Mm. It came out with a, it had a little speeder in the back. How many battle droids were in there? 20 something battle droids in that set. Yeah. I mean, full of battle droids. You could wrap them up, like in that scene at the battle with the, with the Gungans fighting them, the, one of those MTTs pulled up, it opened up, it had its little trays of these battle droids and it opened them up and it let them Shoo. out. The MTT had that in it. It was really cool. Mm-hmm. This is the only MTT we have is the micro scale. And it came in these cool little packs. Mm-hmm. And the parts on this are very rare. This has some uh, dark orange parts that only came on that set. Did we talk about your favorite set? Did we get I to believe that? I mentioned the Pod Pod Racers. Racers, but another okay. one that I did love. I love the battle droids. Mm. We got another set back here. Those, we these, have one of those open, too, I think, somewhere. These old Battle Droid battle packs are really, they're like the original the battle pack. The guns are, okay, I like the newer versions of the guns that they made later on. Oh, yeah. Is that the same one? Blasters. No, the, well, look at the guns. The first Battle Droids they made had only hands that held guns sideways. Mm. So that that wasn't didn't make as much sense. So they were gangsta. Maybe have some minifigures yeah. of the battle droids. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but what what I like about the battle droids is they have the different colored ones for commanders and pilots, mm-hmm. and then you can switch them around if you want. And they're just really the, really a, a simple piece mm-hmm. that, uh, that are pretty customizable. It's a backwards and, and megaphone. They're affordable too. Those they're guns are backwards. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Would, their hands and arms and legs fall off so easily. Well, even the stormtroopers had these guns, the backwards yeah. mm-hmm. microphones. This particular pack here is a droid battle pack from 2000 and they made four total battle packs. They're neat because they come with cards, like trading cards and stands to display them. It's too bad Lego got away from that. It'd be cool if they made those again. Are there any sets that you feel that Lego needs to make that they never did? Is there any scene that they did not capture mm. in Lego form? They never put Jabba in the any of the pod racing scenes. And Jabba's in the pod racing scene, and so is... Uh, Bib Fortuna. Bib Fortuna. He's... Yeah. So there's the old Jabba, and then there's Bib Fortuna. It'd be kind of cool if they, they tied that in there. It'd be nice to come out with Jabba again. They had a there. lot of Twi'leks in the mm-hmm. uh, pod racing scene they could put in there. And even uh, Willow was in the pod racing scene. <laughs> now, the actor... Do you remember the actor Willow? Yes. Uh, yeah. Didn't, Didn't he, he play uh, Ewok? That's what mm-hmm. it was. He, he was, was, played, uh, he, was uh, he was Wicked. 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 Okay. He was Wicked. Right. Yeah. As a child, I think he was he 17. Was he was really they young. used Blame. children for the Ewoks. And one of the reasons I remember that is because there was a really cute story that Carrie Fisher would always keep cookies and milk on standby for set whenever they yelled cuts and she would have like one of her assistants rush them to the kids be like eat something drink something don't get dehydrated because those costumes were so they were fur everywhere yeah. and it had to be hot and that is one of the neat what things did you about call them <laughs> murder bears i play star wars battlefront ewoks are relatively new on there mm-hmm. and they're you can, scary you can be an ewok and you can't see them because they're so short and they're running around like these little teddy bears and they have a bow and arrow and one shot one kill and, uh, <laughs> murder and they, they automatically aim for you and it's they are nasty <laughs> like you're you're walking around and you're looking around like yeah. this and, and they then just it's look like down. oh you gotta look down and when you look down somebody else gets here from the side and, and the worst part is when somebody gets a whole team of them together like oh, you have your four on board he walks defeated a whole empire yeah that's right 
With sticks with and sticks. rocks. Yeah. When you're playing Star Wars Battlefront and you turn a corner and like if you're in the Death Star or something and you're in a hallway mm -hmm. and then like Darth Vader comes walking towards you, it is so scary. It, it <laughs> also like, resembles that scene from oh, The no, Shining. Oh no, I did. It <laughs> yeah, the scene you know, from I mean, The Shining with the two twins on the left. How is that relative to the scene in The Shining with two kids? <laughs> Murder bears. <laughs> Okay, they should do a Star Wars horror movie. Fun fact, there is a Star Wars... I don't want to, like, go crazy on this, but there is a fan Star Wars horror movie being made called Ewok Hunt. And a, I could see that. And a bunch of the people, a bunch of my friends within the Star Wars community are working on the project, and it's it's going to be horrifying. It's going to be a Star Wars horror movie. Are you going to make it horrible? Uh, no, but I'm supporting them 100% on it. Okay. I love. Is there a trailer yet? Uh, no, there is an Instagram for it, but okay. they are working really hard on it, and I love watching some Star Wars fan films. We need to get that point across that those bears are not to be messed with. <laughs> Speaking of uh, people showing up in that pod racing scene, there's a lot of Clatoonians, mm -hmm. and I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right or not. I don't know if they had the name Clatoonian at the time, but they're in the Mandalorian. Mm -hmm. They're the ones that had the ATST, and Lego made the Clatoonian figures. There's, they're all over the place in episode one. You see them mm -hmm. a few times. And yeah, not to jump around here or anything, but speaking of the Mandalorian, I believe going back to Pod mm -hmm. Racers, Chris, if you want to talk about that. Yeah, this is what's his name? The guy who had the Boba Fett cost, uh, he outfit. Stole it. What's it? Do you remember his name from that? I haven't watched it enough to memorize his nope. name, but he's mm -hmm. the the sheriff of the town that mm -hmm. had Boba Fett. He Fett's got it from Jawas, didn't he? Yes, uh, he did. He was stranded. In the Mandalorian? He, uh, he TV was, show? Yeah. He was stranded okay. out in the desert, and the Jawas picked him up, and they're like, oh, what do you what do you want to trade or something? We'll trade you, like, the parts from your ship. And he looks up, and over in the corner hanging up, you see Boba's armor. So they're on Tatooine, where they were pod racing. And when he and uh, the Mandalorian go fight the crate Dragon, he, his speeder bike is a pod racer engine. Right. Mm. I remember the, the community went crazy over I, that. People I, I were fighting that over was it. Awesome, and that's one of the reasons why we like the prequels so much is they tie everything together. Mm. With Easter stuff eggs like this, and that's also why we like the Mandalorian so much because mm. of all the Easter eggs that are in. Mm -hmm. it. Finding all the Easter eggs within the show is you. There are millions upon millions. And just when you get in there. answers. You get a lot more questions. Mm -hmm. Okay, Boba Fett survived the Sarlacc. The armor is held by Jawas. What the heck happened? Unless there? it went, <laughs> just cut it up like an owl fell up. Yeah, it's like a little like a, like a like a hairball. But, I mean, there's so many questions there. With the armor, you see Boba when he gets it back, he upgrades his armor to a more clean style. There's a funny imagery of like they're going, getting ready to go save Grogu, and he's like. We have to stop at Home Depot. I need to get spray paint. I need to update my armor. <laughs> and I just need to clean it up. Now, going back to sets, I think that it would be nice to have Queen Amidala's spaceship. Yes. Now, oh, that would, that would wow, mean that yeah. they would have to go back to a chrome yeah. or mm. some type of silver. That would be a lot. And be it chrome. would be awesome. So they never that made that? Uh, you, no. Yeah, chrome would be best. But they, they do use that metallic silver now, too, and that would mm -hmm. work as well. And if Lego's listening, that'd be a great opportunity to remake her in that set, the Queen Amidala. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think it would be awesome. You could put another Darth Maul in there, another Anakin, Qui-Gon. A couple of the astromechs that helped re try to repair mm -hmm. the, Captain the Panaka. I would love to see yeah. like a set with her and her handmaidens, because mm -hmm. the handmaidens, they all wear the same outfit. That would be perfect for a so UCS like a set. squad of them. Mm -hmm. that, that ship has a UCS set. Mm -hmm. with a all battle pack. Of, uh, I'm Speaking of Padme and her handmaidens, here's the original Padme figure. I'm not sure if we talked about her or not, but they she was one of the yellow flesh figures, mm -hmm. and then they changed it to light flesh, and she has that really unique hair that is unique to that minifigure, and it's kind of the same with Qui-Gon. They just changed mm -hmm. it a little bit and Detail. made the hair... A little bit longer. Slightly more detailed. Of course, went from brown to reddish brown. And that's why in our business, we have to be such experts because the like things like that, those hairs have to be correct. If we're selling mm -hmm. that figure that's correct. as is, 
You have to understand right. the differences. Mm -hmm. That's why I don't do Star Wars. It would be very hard to be colorblind and do what we do. You have to look at things under good light just to tell the old light gray from white mm -hmm. bluish gray quite often. And to me, brown is even closer. Mm -hmm. The brown and reddish brown is even closer together than gray. And I admire yes. that about Lego. They continuously improve their product, mm -hmm. their detail, especially with the minifigs. As, as you see now, the newer minifigs have printing on the arms now. They have printing on their leg. I think it's great. I, I love that Lego is doing that. Every time they come out with new stuff, the details are better. Mm -hmm. So it's just thank you for doing that, Lego. We had talked about <laughs> battle droids earlier. Here they are, a close-up of them. They're easy to make an army of battle droids. Mm -hmm because they're affordable, they're small. Whereas if you want to make an army of clones right now, it's going to cost you $1,000. <laughs> you <know? laughs> Whereas you could make one for a hundred bucks with battle droids. That's How about this guy? Does anybody know his name? <clears throat> Speaking of the pod racing scenes I again. I know it. I know it. I'm not going to give it up. I'll let you guys try. This is the young Rodian boy that was Anakin's friend mm -hmm. in the pod racing And I, I thought, when I first saw the movie, I thought, oh, well, look, it's baby Greedo. It's Greedo when he's a kid. And he's going to grow up and die. Aww. <laughs> and Han Solo shot first. Yes. And he had every right to shoot first. It and was it, on the same planet, so there could very well be a relationship. Mm -hmm. could, it, could it be his it uncle? It could be his brother. Brother. Maybe it was him and he changed his name. You know, like a street name. Speaking of George his... Lucas, give us answers. Yes. <laughs> Speaking of his name, what was his name? No, we don't need George Lucas to give us answers. Uh, Dave Filoni. Filoni, go! <laughs> <laughs> Fabron and Filoni, 20... Nobody wants to give up the name. I know the I, name. I felt like it was Finn or something like that. No, that was the Stormtrooper. Baby Greedo? Baby Greedo, yeah. Whoa! Wald. That's it. Wald. That's it. Yeah. Wald. I am Where's a geek. Where's Wald? And I have. <laughs> Man, I'm such a geek. I mean, look at your hat. The only minifigure that we haven't talked about uh, that we have here, we don't have all the minifigures from episode one here, but we have most of them, mm -hmm. is uh, Anakin. And to me, I like fighting and stuff like that. What are you going to do with a little kid minifigure? You know? I like the actor. I thought he did a great job playing young Anakin. All things considered, yeah, he did all right. I think he, my favorite line that he delivered, he had so many great lines for like, it's like, he had like the one with Padme, like, are you an angel? And him telling his whole plan, like, I'm going to get out of here. And well, I'm like, I'm a pilot, you know? In my opinion, the best line he delivered was the like, was his little line during pod racing. Now this is pod racing! <laughs> <laughs> I would run around the house screaming that until my mother was like, Jillian, stop it. She was nervous I was going to say that on my driver's test. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> Did you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that kid from Jingle All the Way. He was the Arnold Schwarzenegger's kid in really? Jingle All the Way. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah, that was the huh. same kid. I wonder what he's doing now. Okay, well, I know what he's doing now. Yep. He got a lot of criticism from the Star Wars fans who did not like the uh, prequels. He delivers pizza. He got out of acting because mm -hmm. of it. Really? Yeah. He was teased in school. People would quote lines to him all the time. <laughs> and he just he just got tired of it. He was like, I don't like this. And he got into, I think when he graduated, he went probably went to college and he uh, became an insurance salesman. Okay. But he is back on the circuit doing like comic cons. And I think he did voiceover special appearance in some Star Wars thing For a while. recently. There was. Yeah. Didn't he have a little run in with the law at some point? Probably. They all do. Mm -hmm. We all do. I mean, they all do. Yeah. <laughs> and that's something that's really sad is just people who don't like the prequels will take it as an opportunity to make jabs at all the actors that yeah. are in them. And like one of the saddest examples is the guy who played Jar Jar Binks. He was just like destroyed yeah. and ripped apart. Really? Yeah, it, it, it was really bad. Yeah, wow. and I was just doing what the director told me to. I was, was like, I was just I'm doing just my job. I was trying to play this character. It's funny because I don't hear anybody saying anything bad about Mace Windu. Who would dare? Who would dare? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all the way quiet. He was the can main... Because none of us can Samuel. imagine. Well, the thing Samuel, Samuel, Samuel would be like, what'd you say? <laughs> the, thing, the interesting thing about Samuel Jackson is he's such, like, I guess, an influential actor. He was the reason that a purple lightsaber was brought into the Star Wars yeah. universe. Yeah. He was just chilling with, mm -hmm. with like, George Lucas and it's like... <laughs> He's like, okay, so we're going to this giant scene and you are going to have a lightsaber. And he's like, well, I want to be able to find me in it. Can I get a purple one? And he's like, no, we have green and blue for the good guys and red for the bad guys. And he's like, and like during filming, like they they don't, they just had like the sticks so they, when they would go in afterwards and just edit them. So then he saw on the big screen, guess what? 
Got a purple yeah. lightsaber. You win. Yeah, I can't imagine anybody doing a better job than me than Samuel Jackson. He for did that. a great job. But he was not the first person they were considering mm -hmm. for that role. It was Tupac Shakur. Really? Really? Yeah. Tupac was a, a huge Star Wars fan, I think and he was this. actually talking to George Lucas about being Mace Windu, and then he died. Interesting. <laughs> you know what else is interesting, which we'll get to eventually in Episode Three, was how they how Palpatine dispatched three Jedi Knights in a matter of seconds. Like, uh, they weren't even paying uh, attention. Uh, okay, we'll get to that later. Okay, we'll, we'll talk to about three. that later. Episode three. Another person no one makes fun of is Liam Neeson. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Again, that's yeah. another man you're like, I'm not making nope. fun of him. How could him. they make fun of the actor that plays Jar Jar? You don't even know what he looks like. Still. Internet. Unless he walks around and talks exactly <laughs> like that. People gave Hayden Christian, well, that's another movie too, Hayden Christensen, but they, yeah. gave, they gave him a hard time for being Anakin. I thought he was fantastic. I like the actor uh he does a good job and the fact that they're bringing him back for for kenobi kenobi yeah. is awesome yeah. i can't wait for that i think the announcement about kenobi was so well taken by the star wars fandom mm -hmm. the way it was presented it was at like a disney panel and the higher ups just look at ian mcgregor in front of everyone and they just go are you going to play obi-wan kenobi again and he just takes a moment he's like Yes, and the internet breaks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then when they announce Hayden Christensen coming back for it, it's going to be such a like. I think people have a tough time fans. with him is because of um, James Earl Jones played the voice mm -hmm. of Darth Vader. Mm -hmm. A man named Dave Prowse, I think, was his name. He did the actor body, yeah. mm -hmm. did the, the motions and all that. And the voice was James Earl Jones, and that is a deep, guttery voice. Yeah. But mm -hmm. that's what happens when you get melted in lava. He hadn't and gotten yeah. melted in lava yet. Well, I just right. thought the you helmet know, changed his voice. Yeah, yeah, the helmet yeah. 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 mask in there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but the voice itself doesn't fit with his voice. What I mean by that is like the words he uses, the choice of words, how the words are said are so different. Yeah. And, the, and there's, an, there's an accent with James Earl Jones that you don't have with the other actor. And then once again, so you it, do it's have... it's hard to see that. It's hard to see that. Mm -hmm. blend together but that's episode two yeah, yeah. and beyond yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. moving on all right what do you guys think about these micro fighters they're great i love micro fighters i will stand behind them i stand love behind them jillian i am <laughs> i love them i don't <gasps> Ooh. i like them for if you were to make a carousel or something <gasps> Oh, they're they adorable <laughs> carousel. i always yeah. wanted to make a carousel out yeah. of these yeah. yeah but from a resale perspective when i find when we get these in a collection mm -hmm. i'll take the minifigures out because the minifigures are great in most of these sets so that's why i like unique them. and then i'll take the build and just throw it in the picture i've noticed sometimes we've done that I yeah <laughs> you wonder where those come from and that's where they're coming from i sometimes just like i'll see i think one time i was in the store i saw you go Boing. And you said real heads up and just shut See, I like it. them for a consumer standpoint. Yes, we love to sell and, and make money here at the store, but what I'd like about these little micro fighters is you have a chance of buying a set for at when these when these came out they're around ten dollars. And you can get Darth Maul in a ten dollar set and you don't yeah. have to spend that's eighty awesome to ninety dollars on a set just to have Darth Maul. So that's why I like them. I think it's great for little kids to have the opportunity to get their favorite characters and not spend a fortune doing it they mean like mall they have anakin any sets or scenes that either need uh, a remake we talked no about Amidala, star fighters that's for but, sure <laughs> um, come on Ed. we have plenty anything that as star wars continues we know they're going to go back to episode one is there any it, scene that, that I, I it, would, it needs an update i'd love to see some pod racers that oh. actually move so maybe some pullback using pullback okay. motors Ooh. And you could have your own pod racers. Actually races, race them. You know? Um, that'd be really cool. How about other pod racers? There were so many others, like Quadranero. A DIY, mm -hmm. build racer. your own pod racer. Mm -hmm. Make Quadranero minifigure. That, that'd be neat. His, mm -hmm. his breaks apart. He um, never really gets to race. When the droid army, the Separatist army, goes to Naboo, there's, they land in these weird-shaped planes, mm -hmm. the ships. And then the big MTTs come off the ships and everything. Those are... I'm surprised they've never made like a mini one of those mm -hmm. just to say they exist, you know? Or a new gun race ship. They'd be too big to make it in would be too real big. life. But I've, I've seen a lot of big mocks where, you know, size doesn't mm -hmm. matter. When you go to these Lego conventions, you see full size everything. Yeah. In fact, they made a life size X Wing. Mm -hmm. uh, but I've never seen anybody make the landing ships that 
the MTTs come in on mm-hmm. it. It's yeah, kind of so. surprising. Which, if we're talking about the movie, it doesn't really make sense. Because, I mean, if I was Newt Gunray, I wouldn't even bother sending anything to the ground. I would just be blasting everything from space, just surgically destroying everything from space. I don't know. What a waste of time and money and all these battle droids. That doesn't look as cool on film. It yeah. does. That's why. It does. Mm-hmm. That's why. And, and then, you know, how are they going to have the... It, they wouldn't be able to bring the Gungans in as bait that way. Yeah. I'm a mm-hmm. stick in the mud. Yeah. No, you're a Jar Jar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you look like I would be like, I'd be hanging <laughs> no. out with you going, don't you see better if we just laser beam him and just blow him all up? <laughs> no, that's a stupid idea. <laughs> Send out the droids. Anything else we want to show? Is there anything we're missing? No, we I got some AFA graded uh, episode one figs that has nothing to do, nothing to do with Lego, but they're just really cool. What's interesting is that the original Star Wars films, the action figures were a big part of the movie. Everybody wanted to play with the action figures, and that's really all they made of them, you know, for toys. Whereas with the prequels, with episode one, you had the action figures, but you also had Lego. You know, and you also had all kinds of other stuff like Matchbox cars, Micro Machines that were Star Wars, but Lego really took off and now is more valuable, whereas these action figures are, the the action figures themselves are almost worthless. Like a brand new sealed action figure is probably worth less money now than it would retail price. Yeah. Whereas the Lego set is worth so much more. Mm-hmm. These are actually AFA graded original episode one action figures. And it's kind of a joke because it probably costs $70 to grade that. And it's worth about <laughs> Can you explain for people 70 to $100. Who have, people like me who have no idea what that is. Can you explain what? Uh... Well, AFA is the action figure authority. Mm -hmm. Um, and there are other graders that are not AFA, it's whatever they want to be called. Like we could grade minifigures and call them ABC, Atlanta Britco graded minifigures. Mm -hmm. We're not doing that yet. When they grade them, they, they put them in these hard plastic cases so that they can't be touched again. And they, they fix them in there so that they don't move around or anything. And uh, a perfect score would be a 10. They also barcode them so you could look it up and see that it's official. They're neat. They're, it's cool grading something. But the problem is, and, and the reason why we haven't gotten into minifigure grading, is that once it's in that plastic case, it can't come out. And so it's a pure collector's item. You can't touch it. You can't take it apart. And you can't play with it. This plastic also protects ultraviolet light from getting mm-hmm. through and destroying the plastic inside. Also, one concern I would have is, let's say we we were grading at Lego minifigures and we gave this new gun ray a perfect 10. If he's sitting inside that case and it's exposed to temperatures, he could crack, his torso could crack. There's stress on his torso right now. So just minifigures sitting in our glass cases, their torsos have cracked just because there's stress on that plastic because of the clutch power. So you could grade something at 10 and, and it cracks while over it's time. in the case. Well, over these time. figures can do that too somewhat. Yeah. But you know, when Lego first started making licensed product, you can call Lego up and say, hey, I, I want to buy a Cloud City Boba Fett. And you can buy five of them. You can buy really? six of them. Mm-hmm. Yes. You can buy the keychains, not keychains, uh, fridge magnets with the figs on the fridge magnets that were not glued. The, the bags in the sets, all the figures were in bag one. I remember that. Some of them were already built and made hasbro had a fit see hasbro has the licensee the licensing for action figures so and they have made millions of of ben kenobis and c-3po's and not enough of the other figs but that's a whole other story <laughs> and they got mad at lego and they said hey you guys can't do this you guys can't make these figures by themselves you can't they were going to sell these by themselves you can't do that and they're like why not this is lego I said well we have the license for action figures and lego's like well, these aren't action figures. These are buildable toys. Mm-hmm. And Hasbro said, no, they're not. What What are you calling them? Kenner. Uh, it was Hasbro. Right. Kenner was earlier. Kenner was yeah, earlier. Kenner went out. This is when, when the Lego got the license. So these are Hasbro? Those are Hasbro. Okay. So I think they <clears throat> bought Kenner, so it may still say Kenner right. on it. Yeah. It says Hasbro. But Hasbro argued that they have the license for action figures, and they have the exclusive license to make Star Wars action figures. So Lego had to redo everything, mm-hmm. not sell those figures by themselves, Take them apart, sell them in the sets, in the bags. Because of lawsuit or litigation? Or uh, I guess it was pre-litigation. I okay. think they were arguing with, with Lego about okay. it. I don't think they really had to go to court over it. But uh, Lego, I guess... Lego complied. Complied, and they said, okay, cool. We'll do it this way. And now it's a buildable toy. And that's how they did it. So they cannot sell 
licensed pieces to you or send them to you unless you lost the part and then you can call them up. I don't know. I think it, I think it's sad that they, they've done it this way because Hasbro really isn't doing what I think they should be doing with action figures. I think Lego could do so much more. I'd love to see Lego making mystery packs. It'd be great if they had those mystery figs for Star Wars. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't be good for us as resellers, but it would be great for the consumer mm -hmm. to come up with episode one mystery packs, episode mm -hmm. two mystery packs. It'd be great. And you can put in figures that you don't typically see in a set that you could get in the mystery pack. It'd be wonderful, but can't do it because of, uh, I think for now, Hasbro. But now that Disney purchased things, I think that things are can be renegotiated. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us. We have the whole crew, a Jedi, a Gungan, and a Sith Lord. Can I take this off now? <laughs> no, <laughs> not until the camera stops. No. Uh, we will continue this series. Uh, this will be a series of Star Wars vodcasts. We're going to go in order. So next up is episode two. Yeah. And then we're going to go to the Clone Wars cartoon series, right? Yes. So we're going in the order. Chronological order. Chronological, yeah. not mm -hmm. when they came out. It may not be the next podcast. Uh, we're doing. Uh, we're going to try for once a month. Mm -hmm. Once a month, yeah. Once a Ish. month, do a Star Wars. Yeah. yeah. Don't hold us to it, but we're going to try for it. And if, if we miss something, let us know in the comments. Yeah. If, we, if you want to see something in the next Star Wars one, let us know in the comments. If we need to do less of something or more of something. Of course, as far as what we're showing, we're limited to what hasn't been purchased in the store. Uh, we do have that huge collection coming yep. probably today, so that'll be awesome. More stuff for the next vodcast. Thank you, Chris and Ed and Jillian. Thank you once again, and we will probably see similar faces on the next vodcast, I imagine. Let us know what you guys want to see. What other vodcasts would you like to see? Uh, Harry Potter has been requested. We're definitely going to do a Lego board game. No one asked for it, but I want to do it. <laughs> so <laughs> we're going to do a Lego board game coming up. So let us know what you guys want to see. I can totally understand if you request Ed not wear Gungan wear in the next podcast. They'll That'd probably understandable. They're probably going to request more yeah, Gungan. Probably. <laughs> and I'll make it happen. Yes. We'll see you. Check us out on as an actual audio podcast on uh, Spotify and all those normal podcast apps and we will see you guys very soon thank you see it see it now put that hat back on noodle like noodle like noodle like lego 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 lego